call the meeting to order. Call the roll. Trustee Fenton. Here. Trustee Dodge. Trustee Calendrell. Here. Trustee Healy. Here. Trustee Katsinas. Here. Trustee Milani. Here. Mayor Pico. Here. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that in the motion. All right. Okay. I'll go ahead and announce it. Approval of January 20, 2020, regular meeting minutes. I'll entertain a, a motion to approve the minutes uh, with uh, one change on page eight to uh, change the vote on the top, where the motion was a, was made by Trustee Healy, seconded by Trustee Milani, that this matter was approved. The motion carried by the following vote. The vote was actually five to two, with Trustee Fenton and Trustee Dodge voting nay. I'll move. Second. Any, any other questions or comments or changes? Call the roll. Trustee Fenton? Aye. Trustee Katsinas? Aye. Trustee Calendrello? Aye. Trustee Healy? Aye. Trustee Milani? Aye. Mayor Pico? Aye. Proclamation honoring Orland Park Bakery as Orland Park Business of the Month, February 2020. George, could you give me the proclamation, please? So today we'll be honoring uh, Orland Park Bakery as Orland Park Business of the Month. A proclamation honoring Orland Park Bakery as Orland Park's Business of the Month, whereas Orland Park's Orland Park Bakery first opened in 1970 by John Guba and was located in Orland Park as part of the Orland Park Plaza at 143rd Street in LaGrange Road, where UIC's parking lot is now located. And whereas in 2003, Orland Park Bakery was acquired by Tom Major with the help of his mother Kathleen and sisters Amy and Jenny during the holidays. And whereas in 2008, Tom Major welcomed his brother Dan Major to join in on the, business, the family business fund. And whereas prior to acquiring Orland Park Bakery, Tom owned a landscaping business and Dan worked for a technology consulting firm. And whereas in 2012, Orland Park Bakery moved to their new and current location, continue to make Orland Park their home, increasing square footage from 3,700 square feet to 6,400 square feet. And whereas Orland Park Bakery is very generous with their annual donations and remain active in the community, participating in the Orland Park Farmers Market, Taste of Orland, and the Orland Park Fall Fest. And whereas Orland Park Bakery is very well known, their delicious pet, I don't even know how to say these. Puchkis. Puchkis. On Puchki Day, 100 extra, thanks George. 100 extra employees needed to get through Puchki Day where, they're, where they go through 6,500 pounds of flour, 2,400 pounds of strawberries, 1,200 pounds of Kraft Philadelphia cream cheese, 2,000 pounds of sugar, and tons of other agreements. And whereas each year, Orland Park Bakery sells approximately 1,000 wedding cakes, over 700 lamb cakes for Easter, several hundred wreath eclair cakes for Christmas, thousands of pounds of soda bread and rye bread for St. Patty's Day, thousands of sugar cookies and chocolate dipped strawberries for Valentine's Day, and way too many birthday cakes to count. And whereas Orland Park ba Bakery is a mom and pop style bakery with everything, where everything is homemade, in-house, and always delicious, whereas Orland Park Bakery is yet another gem in Orland Park. Now therefore, I, Keith Peacock, Village President of the Village of Orland Park, Ill Illinois, and the counties of Cook and Will, do hereby extend the gratitude of the entire community for more than 40 years of serving the community, and hereby proclaiming Monday, February 3rd, 2020, is Orland Park Bakery Day in the village of Orland Park. And, and I'd like to tell a, a little personal story. So from the time I was five years old, I was actually sent up, because I, I lived on Jefferson over here, I was sent up a block to walk across 143rd and go pick up fresh bread. And uh, I know they say there's no such thing greater than sliced bread, but to a five-year-old, there's nothing more interesting than the, Bryce, the, the bread slicing machine. And uh, also Sunday donuts, as, as long as I can remember. So uh, since 1970, I'm pretty sure my family has been uh, um, a customer of Warren Park Bakery. I'm sure there's other stories here on the board floor as well. And with that, I'd like to welcome um, Dan and Tom up. Are they here? Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
Wait, Dan. Anybody have anything else to add? I just placed an order today for three coffee cakes for Wednesday. <laughs> All right, next. Economic Development Advisory Board appointment. Mr. Mayor. Trustee Katsinas. I move to advise and consent the appointment of Matthew Ward to the Economic Development Advisory Board. Second. And before we vote, just so that everyone knows, we have several appointments, and rather than go through and come down and, and uh, swear each person in individually, we're going to swear you in as, as a group, just uh, so that you guys can move, move on with uh, your night and not watch the, the parade of people getting uh, appointed to these boards. With that, call the roll. Trustee Katsinas. Aye. Trustee Milani. Aye. Trustee Fenton. Aye. Trustee Calandrello. Aye. Trustee Healy. Aye. Mayor Peacock. Aye. Recreation Advisory Board appointment. Mr. Mayor. Trust Katsinas. I move to advise and consent the appointment of Eric Berry, Aaron, I'm sorry, Aaron Berry to the Recreation Advisory Board. Second. All in favor signify by voting aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 6 0. Museum Advisory Board. Mr. Chairman. Trustee Fenton. Move to advise and consent the appointment of Kevin Calzo to the Museum Advisory Board. Second. Any questions or comments? Sign All in favor, signify by voting aye. 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 Open lands. Uh, motion carries 6 0. Open lands fund commission. Mr. Chairman. Trustee Fenton. Move to advise and consent, consent the appointment of David Gunzinger to Open um, Lands Fund. Gunzinger? to the Open Lands Fund Commission. That's Donald. Donald, sorry. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 6-0. Technology Commission appointment. Mr. Chairman. Trustee Milani. I move to advise and consent the appointment of John J. Matusik to the Technology Commission. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 6 0. Zoning Board of Appeals appointment. Mr. Chairman. Trustee Healy. I move to advise and consent the appointment of Brian Weaver to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 6 0. Okay. Now, could everyone who, I just, who we just uh, appointed, uh, could they come up and be sworn in?
I want to thank all of you uh, for stepping up to serve on, on the commissions, which uh, uh, play an important role um, in, in providing the uh, village input. And some of the commissions are actually uh, legally required by law. So thank you very much. Thank you. Accounts payable from January 21st, 2020 to February 3rd, 2020. Mr. Mayor. Trustee Healy. I move to approve the accounts payable for January 21st, 2020 through February 3rd, 2020 in the amount of $2,606,120.43. Second. Any questions or comments? Call the roll. Trustee Healy. Aye. Trustee Katsinas? Aye. Trustee Fenton? Aye. Trustee Calandrello? Aye. Trustee Milani? Aye. Mayor Pico? Aye. Consent agenda? Consent agenda. Item A, payroll for January 24th, 2020 approval. Item B, an ordinance amending appendices A and B to ordinance number 5466, ordinance number uh, C, budget adjustments, first quarter 2020 approval. D, bulk material unit prices. E, Boley Farm, Farm Stand Rental Agreement. F, LED street lighting upgrade, IDOT and Cook County Jurisdiction Roads change order. Item G, utility excavator purchase, source well purchasing cooperative proposal. Item H, disposal of village equipment, online auction, parks and grounds and recreation departments ordinance. I will entertain a motion to approve items A through H of the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Call the roll. Trustee Milani? Aye. Trustee Healy? Aye. Trustee Fenton? Aye. Trustee Calandrello? Aye. Trustee Katsinas? Aye. Mayor Pico? Aye. Census, Census Water Meter Conversion Program? Mr. Chairman? Trustee Fenton? Move to approve authorizing the purchase of Census Water Meter related products, including Census IPRO meters from Core and Maine of Mokina, Illinois, in an amount not to exceed the board of budget, approved budget amount of $390,000. Second. Second. Any questions or comments? Um, the only question I have here, George, is this is a budgeted amount, so we purchase whatever we can up to that budget amount since we have to change over everything. Is that correct? That's correct. And as Rich can just provide a little bit of uh, history of Sure. This is uh, started. The current program is started back in 2013. Uh, most of the efforts up to this point have been uh, uh, to convert to uh, smart point transmitters, which uh, allow staff the ability to to read meters from uh, from the office. Um, we're now kind of switching over to uh, wholesale uh, replacement of the existing meters to the new iPro meters, um, which are uh, considerably more accurate than the ones we use now. Okay. Sounds good. Are those new microphones? Nope. Oh. Turn off, but now they work. Okay. Any other questions? Call the roll. Trustee Fenton. Pardon me? We're calling the roll. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Aye. Trustee Getzinas? Aye. Trustee Calandrello? Aye. Trustee Healy? Aye. Trustee Milani? Aye. Mayor Pico? Aye. Amending Title Seven, Chapter Four, Section Ten, Bond and Forfeiture. Forfeiture. Or summer, please. Five four eight one. 
Mr. Chairman. Trust Calendrello. I move to pass ordinance number 5481 entitled an ordinance amending Title 7, Chapter 4, Section 10 of the Only Park Municipal Code, Bond and Forfeiture Section. Second. And just as background, um, this is not required anymore, so that's why we're removing it from the code. Any other questions? Call the roll. Trustee Calendrello. Aye. Trustee Katsinas. Aye. Trustee Fenton. Aye. Trustee Healy. Aye. Trustee Milani. Aye. Mayor Pico. Aye. Are there any uh, residents here to speak? Okay, board comments. Oh. Over here, I assume? Yes. Uh, we, if you could give us your name and, and uh, your address. Sure, my name is Matt Lulich. I live at uh, 14429 88th Avenue, Maycliffe subdivision uh, for about 40 years now. Um, I've been excited to see that there are some uh, plans uh, apparently in the uh, offing for Schusler Park. I've followed it uh, fairly closely, although I, one thing that does concern me is I've not heard anything about whether there's going to be any ad, ad, um, uh, interest and in, uh, 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 surveys uh, among the neighborhood to see what the plans are for the park. Uh, maybe those have been undertaken and I don't know about them, but um, so far I have not heard anything other than there was a uh, proposal to use the park for the uh, Pioneers program, which um, I think is uh, not a, uh, uh, a correct use for that neighborhood park, although I understand that maybe that's gone by the boards now. But I would like to know whether there's going to be input from the residents on what the plans are for the park, in that I understand that the um, uh, park is supposed to be done next year. It would seem to me that um, landscape architects, things of that nature, uh, need to be retained and uh, planning needs to be done for that type of endeavor. So just curious as to what's on the boards about that. So I'll, I'll quickly answer that. Um, so in the budget this year is master planning for both uh, Schuschler Park and Centennial Park, which includes the landscape architect and with a master plan, and that will also include engaging neighborhood residents and as well as the whole village, because it's not just the neighborhood that's infected, it's the whole village. So that's, uh, and that currently is either out for RFP or being, the RFP is being developed um, to go out for that right now, and that will be done this year. And uh, the board has committed to um, doing the uh, reconstruction of Schuschler Park in one season uh, in 2021 as opposed to five years, which was in the long-term capital budget. So that's what we agreed to in the capital budget plan, which we'll, we'll have a capital budget. Um, th those meetings won't start until, what, August of this year. But by that time, the master plan should be should be done or near completion, and we should have a plan. So the master plan for August of this year? Master plan is going to be done as soon as we get the RFP out and we choose the master planning, and then part of that will be to engage residents. Yeah, can you, do you have any idea when the, the resident involvement is going to uh, Right now we are out for RFP right now, so we're putting together the RFP that's going to go out for the uh, master planning bids, and then we'll, once that's done, we'll engage the residents. So I don't know exactly what the timeline of that is. That will be determined through the, uh, through the RFP process. And, and, we'll, and uh, we'll get your contact information to make sure you're staying in the loop uh, for that process. Very good. Thank you. Sure. Thank you for your comments. Board comments, Trustee Fenton. I just want to remind everybody about there's upcoming events for the museum. Go to our website and click on the link for the museum. We have quite a few coming up. And then the current um, exhibit that's there is all about the history of the schools in Orland Park and in the surrounding area. And it's a phenomenal um, exhibit. And we've got one document coming that the teachers back in, I think it was in the 1800s, made $40. That was their contract price. <laughs> so it puts things in perspective. So um, it's a great exhibit. Get you, if you get a chance, go over there and check it out. And that's it. Just Calendrell. Just uh, I want to thank uh, our village team for all the hard work with the uh, Cinderella Ball, which was uh, this week. And uh, I think we had 300 plus people. Um, it was a great event. A lot of families. It was a lot of uh, fathers and daughters, but also uh, the whole a couple of whole families. Just want to appreciate staff for a great uh, evening. And then the Wayne Myers, who for the last I don't know, Nancy five six years have donated their time for uh, giving pictures and portraits of families. Uh, either the money I think it was like 15 dollars. 
the photos goes to um, a charity. I can't, I'm going blank on the charity right now, but I know uh, it goes towards to toys for children with cancer so they can have something to play with and enjoy. I can't think of the name right now, but it's a great organization. Um, so I want to thank Dwayne Myers and the staff for a great job. And uh, hopefully, I know staff are talking about expanding it to other, maybe doing a superhero in the future so it could kind of get the uh, daughter, I mean the um, mothers and sons kind of focused. So uh, congratulations and Keith, I'll bring a Poochki for Fat, uh, for Fat Tuesday for you. I'll Stay bring a Poochki. As, as a Polish American, you need to have a Poochki, so I'll bring <laughs> one over there. Can you bring six more? I'll bring the whole board. Oh, nice. <laughs> Thank you. Trustee Healy. After 10 years, my neighbors are moving. Jim and Kelly Houston and their three children, uh, four children, are, are moving to um, are moving out, and I've, we're going to miss them because these are exactly the kind of people we want in Orland Park. And the good news is that they're moving to Mallard Landing, so they're staying in town. Not everybody is moving out to another suburb, or that they, they are the perfect family to to live in Orland Park. They're staying here for the schools and uh, hopefully they'll have better neighbors this time. So, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Trustee Katsinas. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to the Orland Park Police Department that sent out a very important message um, to the residents via cell phone and home phones reminding people to lock their automobiles at nighttime. Um, nine o'clock, they always tell you that's the routine. Um, and if you see something, say something. Chief, is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, the school districts have cooperated and are sending out robocalls. They're sending out calls. Oh, jeez. Uh, today, school. Uh, my, uh, District 230 is sending out robocalls. Our surrounding departments are cooperating. Uh, the fire protection district has put up the sign, uh, put up the same uh, uh, verbiage on their signs. Uh, and we have message boards up in two places that are being rotated every day. So for a week, uh, all of our surrounding departments are putting up information. Simply lock your cars because these people are out there. It takes them all about two or three seconds to try and get into your car. Take your valuables, take your car. You have to be one of those who leaves your car keys in it. They will also take your garage door opener, open your garage, go in your garage. We've had one occasion where they went into a house. These are totally and completely preventable. And uh, with a little bit of help from our residents, uh, uh, we'll end this as we have other crime uh, issues in the past. Thank you, Chief. Trustee Milani. Um, reminding everybody, there's a, uh, uh, the Southwest Community Concert Band. They're coming up February 16th uh, at the Cultural Center. Um, also, to keep in mind that the Quilt of Tears is going on from February 6th to February 8th, so hopefully people can stop by and see that as well. Um, I was going to talk about the automated telephone message uh, that the uh, police department sent out, uh, but Cindy beat me to that. So uh, everybody, just, thanks for coming. Have a great night. Uh, thank you. So. Uh, so I also want to talk about the police calls, and, and I want to point out that this is part of us being proactive to help you identify that people are, you know, an issue that is going on in all the surrounding suburbs, and we're being proactive. And point out that in 2018, our crime was at the, the lowest number of crimes we've had since in 25 years. And then in 2019, so last year, they were down another 6%. So it's not because we're having some inordinate amount of crime that's higher than what we've seen in the past. It's because this is one particular area where we know we're, we know we're having issues, and we want to be proactive with it. And it, as the chief said, it's completely preventable. So this is not because there's some new giant spike. It's because this is something we can also prevent because almost every one of these I think every one of these is because the car doors were unlocked or because the keys were left in the car. So every single one. And uh, we have a couple of high pro profile people that have had two cars stolen from their driveway or one car stolen from their driveway um, because they'll, they'll come back. If you're dumb enough to do it once, they'll leap, they'll come back a second time. So lock your vehicles. And again, you know, we're, we're, this is part of our police department doing what it takes to keep our crime low, which is what we've done. And all the surrounding communities are now following our lead and being proactive like this, which will help drive these people out. Um, 
Also, I want to thank our Recreation Department for all the work they do. The Cinderella's Ball was great, and then everything else that we've got going on. We heard a comment tonight from Mr. Lulich about uh, Schuessler Park. Uh, you know, thanks to the board for committing to, uh, you know, fixing all these parks. The money that we've put into John Humphrey, about uh, $2.6 million, I think, in total to renovate that. Next to Schuessler, then next to Centennial of our major parks while still investing. I think we're going into 19 parks this year uh, as far as... Uh, um, doing some refurbishment in 19 different parks this year. So um, the, the, the department does a great job, our grounds department does a great job, and the board is committed to getting all these uh, parks catching up on some of the capital needs that we have. So great job on that. I uh, also want to thank Public Works for all their work with snow plowing, salting, and all of that. Um, knock on wood, it's been a fairly uh, calm year. Hopefully it stays that way, and uh, hopefully I didn't just jinx it. Um, so, uh, thank you all for coming out tonight, and uh, I think it's almost a record, 27 minutes uh, in the last two and a half years. So, uh, with that, I'll take a motion to uh, go into executive session. Oh, and uh, Orland Park Bakery left some treats in the back for everyone, so you should help yourselves. Mr. Chairman. Trustee Benton. Move to go into executive session for A, approval of minutes, B, security procedures to respond to a danger to the safety of the public or village staff or property. Second. Call the roll. Trustee Fenton. Aye. Trustee Katsinas. Aye. Trustee Calandrello. Aye. Trustee Healy. Aye. Trustee Milani. Aye. Mayor Pico. Aye.